Greetings, brothers and sisters. Well, today we continue moving through Philippians, albeit very slowly. And today's devotion I've entitled Whatever is True, and you'll see why. I'm going to read this passage in two versions. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learnt or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. In the J.B. Phillips translation, we read this. Here is a last piece of advice. If you believe in goodness and if you value the approval of God, Fix your minds on the things which are holy and right and pure and beautiful and good. Model your conduct on what you have learnt from me, or what I have told you and shown you, and you will find the God of peace will be with you. Well, Paul here, when he says finally, he's a little bit like some ministers, perhaps like myself, <laughs> who say that uh, this is my final point and then seem to extend that final point for a few more final points. But really, Paul's just talking about their ethical actions, you know, things that would follow on from what he has already said. And the thing is this, that Paul pulls out some virtues here, virtues that were actually um, encouraged and valued in Greek society, in Roman society. But of course, there's a completely Christian slant to everything that Paul urges them. And he says, if they live like this, they will be as stars in the night sky. And that's why we're just looking back at Philippians 2. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. Paul really wants the Christians that he has been teaching to be acceptable in society, but to take it to a new standard, a better standard, a higher standard, that of Christ himself. In this way, uh, Christians would win the approval of the people in their society to be like stars in the sky. That's what we should be as Christians, different than the world, trustworthy. And that is why Paul urges all these virtues upon the Philippian Christians. The Greek word for think about means to reckon, take into account, calculate, evaluate. Uh, a good way of thinking about this is to discuss in your mind. And that is what Paul wants the Philippian Christians to do with all the virtues that he's mentioned here, truth and uh, no, being noble and so on. And that's what we are called to do as Christian people, not just to go along with the world, but to think about what is said, what is done and evaluate if it is true. Paul writes this, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, think about such things. We're not just to go with the flow of society, but we're actually asked to, well, to think about, is what is being said or done, is this truth? Kent Hughes writes this, everything that is true is from God because all truth is God's truth. Kent Hughes goes on to say, this mind seeks whatever is true in every avenue of life, from faith to science, to relationships, to public life, to business. A Christian has to work out what is true. So often we're caught out. Someone tells us something, we get quite worked up about it. I'm just thinking of myself here. Get worked out up about something. It doesn't feel just. It doesn't feel right. And we can just go off and say bad things about that person or that situation. And yet the Christian, first of all, has to work out, is it true? Just to spend a little bit of time mulling about that or investigating it. That is what Paul is calling us to do here. Gerald F. Hawthorne in his commentary writes that this is about the search for truth in every aspect of life, including thought, speech and act. 
it's comprehensive, this desire to know if it is true or if it isn't. Jesus, of course, embodies this. Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. The Apostle John spends quite a bit of time in his gospel talking about Jesus as the truth. Jesus came to his own full of grace and truth. Truth is highly valued by the Apostle John and ought to be highly valued by us too. God's word is truth, says the gospel writer John as well. Christians are very much concerned for the truth. When I think about truth, <laughs> And this comes from John's Gospel as well. Pontius Pilate, when he had Jesus before him, just couldn't come at it very well. So Jesus is being judged by him. And Jesus says, everyone on the side of truth listens to me. And Pontius Pilate said, what is truth? You see, for Pontius Pilate, truth wasn't a virtue. He was willing to chase willing to think about. For Pontius Pilate, it wasn't about truth, but what would make his life easier. He was thinking about his particular situation. It would be easier to send an innocent man to the cross, to crucifixion, than it would be to release him. It would make his own life easier. The Sanhedrin that had brought Jesus to Pilate urged Pilate without thinking to just condemn Jesus to death. And then when Pilate started to equivocate, when Pilate started to think about the situation, they threatened Pilate. They said that if he basically didn't condemn Jesus, he was no friend of Caesar. In other words, he would be standing on pretty thin ice, that they would all be writing letters to Caesar in Rome saying that, Pilate had allowed Jesus, who claimed to be king of the Jews, free, claimed that he was set free. And so Pilate took the pragmatic approach. He did what was easiest rather than what was right. And I suggest to you today that that is how our society is as well. It's not about truth. It's about saying what pleases others, doing what pleases others feeling acceptable because we've gone along with the crowd. Paul doesn't want that for us. God doesn't want that for us. We are to be like Christ. We are Christians. We are to be like Christ. And this virtue is very, very important. I often think to myself that if Christians are known to be liars, why should they accept the gospel? Why should anyone accept the gospel from us? We have to be people on the side of truth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us in our day and age to be people that love the truth. Heavenly Father, we live in an age that is pragmatic, where people say what the itching ears of those who hear them long to hear. And we pray, Lord, that we would not be like that, that we would be on the side of truth and righteousness, that we would be thinking about these things, that we wouldn't be so quick to come to judgment or to condemn someone else, but rather, Lord, think about what is true. Help us to do that, we pray, so that when we speak the words of the gospel, people might listen to us. We also want to thank you, Lord, for the Bible studies that can be held for the people that lead them, for the studies that are prepared. Help us to grow in our faith to be more like Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.